So hey guys, it is quarter past five on a Tuesday evening, 28th of September, and <clears throat> it's a very depressing day. It is, no, it is raining outside, yes, but it has been raining all day outside, and um, it was bad enough working in it, and well, I've had a bad day today anyway, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but it was bad enough working in the rain anyway, you know, you're walking around with that great big green jacket on, which has gone in the boot now, it's soaking wet and I don't know what to do with that to dry it. Um, so I've been walking around outside all day because it's very quiet out um, at the services at the moment, you know, end of September everybody's... Uh, gone home, nobody's really on holidays, a few caravanners and that about, but not much. So, you know, so I was keeping busy by doing lots and lots of gardening and clearing up leaves and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the rain is very depressing tonight, I'm just grabbing my phone, sorry about that, very depressing tonight because uh, I've got so much rain coming into the car. From, I don't know from various locations. I mean, can you see this bit? That's, that's all soaking wet coming from somewhere um, And then I've just seen that the carpet is also soaking wet So I don't know where that's coming from It just feels really really miserable in here. It just feels really wet in this car and it's one in Lexi, sorry this car, sorry Lexi feels really wet in Lexi, it's like so many areas are letting rain in. I'm worried now that, you know, the electrics might get affected or <clears throat> I might get uh, a cold on my chest or something like that. So it's very depressing today. I, it's rained all day and I'm just so fed up with it. So yeah, you can hear the engine running, you know, I've not been running Lexi a lot this afternoon. She's got a key battery, put a battery in your key light come up now as well, so I've got to do that. I was going to do that today, but I haven't moved because it's wet, so I'll do that tomorrow at Halfords. And, oh, what a day at work. So, we've been having this issue with the shower um, supervisor on facilities. He's decided to lock one of the shower doors. And everybody I kept asking, you know, what's going to be done about the shower? I don't know, you know, something gets sorted out eventually. It's been going on for a couple of weeks. So I, you know, just dealt with it because I don't really, I'm not really there. And, you know, it's not my, it's not my business as, as such to, you know, say, well, why isn't Peter sorting it? Or why isn't Ed sorting it? Or something. So, yeah, I just leave them to it. I just assume that everybody knew what was happening and, you know, perhaps there wasn't the finances or something. So, anyway, I don't know how it occurred, but I was outside and I came back in, and Ed was with Chloe and Robin, I think, and he was trying to get into this locked shower room. And he was sort of saying, you know, does anybody know where the key is? Anyway, everybody was denying they knew where the key was, and I <laughs> chirped up as I do because I like Ed. You know, I don't know why they're hiding this from him. I said, well, I think I know. And Ed said, oh, okay. Who is it? And I said, well, I don't know whether I should tell. And he got a bit snappy then. He said, well, you know, I need to know because I need to find the key and get in and sort this out. So I um, I said, yeah, it's Peter. Uh, from what I hear, it's Peter that's got the key. When he came back, apparently it was it was flooded so he decided to lock it and it stayed locked and i'm really sorry i thought you knew and he said well i didn't um and i said well you know i did keep asking in smith wh smith if anybody knew what was being done about the shower and everybody sort of shrugged their shoulders and said you know peter's sorting it and this is a couple of weeks this has been happening um he said and so ed goes so who knew? I said, I, you know, I, I can't remember who told me. I said, you know, I just mentioned it in Smiths and they just, people were just saying, you know, it's Peter's dealing with it. So I left it. I thought you knew and I'm really sorry that you didn't know. 
So he stormed off and I felt really, 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 really bad. I felt like I was one of all the other little clucky chickens that have been clucking around and not telling Ed stuff, you know. I had a funny feeling when I told um, this other supervisor stuff and nothing was getting sorted. I had a funny feeling it was not being reported back to Ed. I did. Um, I thought, you know... I didn't know what, what I should do, so I basically I left it. I'm just a seasonal worker, I'm not there, and Graham's there, and Billy's there, and other people are there, and, you know, Chloe, you know, the accounts lady, you know, she must talk to Ed, surely. Anyway, I ended up sending him a text saying, I'm really sorry, I didn't know you didn't know, and this won't happen again from me. I will tell you what I know when I know because I don't think that they're treating very fairly. And in fact, what I've done is I've probably blown my job because I've actually gone into WH Smith's and this is what I did. I went into WH Smith's and there were the three supervisors there and I said to them, I can't believe that you would do this to Ed. I can't believe that you're not supporting Ed. How can you do this? You know, I was really angry. And, oh, they all started saying, oh, yeah, but it's Pete. I said, no, no, that's not good enough. You know, I was really, really angry. I said, that's not good enough. Um, you know, whether it's Peter or not, this should have been t taken back to Ed. Ed is the site manager. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just so shocked that you would do this to Ed. Uh, and then I walked out and walked back outside and I stayed out for the rest of the day. And I've got a funny feeling when I go back in on Thursday that the Romanians will be back to not talking to me again I will be sent to Coventry again because it seems to me that Peter for some reason Polish Peter seems to rule the roost and everybody believes in him and nobody's supporting Ed what a bunch of nasty small-minded judgmental people this is what happens when locals work together they all gang up and then when you've got someone new and fresh like ed coming in trying to make changes they all gang together and say oh you know we won't involve him you know we know how to deal with all of this stuff and then poor old ed he's he, he nothing gets sorted and then he, he wonders why you know why sh um, showers are locked and toilets are locked and stuff's broken and stuff's missing and nobody bothers to tell him so um i'll I, i'm been pretty angry all afternoon i've stayed out of the way i've stayed outdoors um i was thinking that i have either got to resign or get sacked well i've not been sacked and i think i am going to go back in thursday and see what the atmosphere is like you can tell very straight away with the romanians they just let you know how much they hate you one minute they're smiling i mean they have hated me and now they love me but I think they might go be back to hating me um, because I think this supervisor that I won't name is well liked by everybody and they feel that he can run the place but he's not running it he's not doing he's doing fuck all about anything he's just taking the information in and saying yeah okay thank you you know does nothing with it uh, maybe it's because he wants to get rid of Ed um, but then maybe he should have applied for the manager's job himself you know so i'll go back in thursday so um yeah i'll go back in thursday and see what happens i mean i have the fortunate um choice of walking out whenever i want i'm just a seasonal worker i can leave whenever i want but i'm so desperate for the money i need this month's money and i need november's money and i did check with ed this morning that i am being kept on at least until the end of november with the um choice of discussing staying on further after that so ed confirmed that this morning but i you know if people are going to make my life hell there because i stood by ed's side that i had a go at the supervisor in front of everybody then and they all like him then they might very well make my life miserable so see you on thursday all right guys all right so let me get this off my shoulder i'll catch you next time Hi guys, uh, it's four o'clock in the morning and as you can see it is pitch black out there. I don't know if I can talk to you with this bright light shining in my face but it was starting to rain really really 
strong uh, just after 3 a.m. and it woke me up and then of course I was really really worried that Lexi was gonna let a whole load of rain in through the roof. So I've hurtled up north at the moment uh, to stay out the rain and it is um, much less here. It's intermittent and on and off but it's light as well. So we've parked in a lay-by at the moment up north but I've looked at the radar again and it says there's a strong oh, oh excuse me there's a strong bit coming across us any minute now where we're sat so I've decided I did get back in the back to go to sleep but I've decided that I, it's better that I um that I just get in the front and wait for it and if I can snooze I'll snooze um, and then when it comes I'll head down south because apparently it says that it's much lighter to nothing a bit further south of here so I'm just sitting here waiting for the the heavy rain to come and then I'll head back down again oh not quite sure what I'm gonna do about this roof leak anyway just thought I'd let you know what I'm doing at four o'clock in the morning. It's uh, eight minutes past six and I had left work at 3 p.m. and it's been pouring with rain all day. I mean, it's just non-stop and as you know, legacy is leaky. So I put her under a tree at work and um, in the hope that she might stay dry and she, she didn't get so wet that she was dripping a lot but she got wet and when I got in the car at the end of the day she was starting to drip so put some um, chamois up above and stuff we were driving her out but then it started to rain hard again and I thought oh, I have got to find somewhere where I can go undercover so basically I was looking on the maps for a multi-storey car park. Now, initially I found one at Preston, but then I, I was just looking around to see where else there was multi-storey car parks, and there was one at Penrith, which as you know is near the area where I'm working and everything, so I thought, you know what, we'll go back up north, we'll go to Penrith, it's a multi-storey car park that belongs to um, the train station. So that's where we're heading now. Um, it's getting dark. I don't stop and park up because she's dried now. She's got a little bit damp there. There's a little bit of damp there, but it's not too much. It's definitely not drip worthy at the moment. So I'm going to head to Penrith, I'm not far from there now, 20 minutes, so I'm going to have a look at the prices. If it's cheaper to keep driving, I'm then going to, what I'm going to do is drive on up to Gretna Green in Scotland because the van stops the other side of Carlisle as you go into Scotland and then there seems to be no rain there. So I'm just going to drive up to the services there and just hope that there is a pay to sleep up there because I'll just stay the night on the services. Because um, I didn't have a good night's sleep last night. In fact, when I went to have my lunch today in the car, as I do at work, I fell asleep and I was late going back into work. Not that it matters because... There was no one around, no bosses around, and nobody noticed. It was very quiet, so nobody cared. I was only late by about six minutes. So, I'm tired. I just want to be out of the rain. I am so fed up with it. I mean, we just get so wet. We got so wet yesterday. Dripping everywhere, plastic dripping everywhere, everything dripping everywhere. I mean, I have got a bag full of laundry that's just stuff that has got sopping wet. I just want to get it all washed now and cleaned and dried and start again. So, heading up to Penrith and 
we will see what the multi-story car park is like. So anyway, I'll catch you guys probably tomorrow. I'll let you know how things went. Okay, catch you later. Okay, gang. Sorry, I'm all a bit of an angle. I just want to get this done quickly. In my first attempt to try and resolve the leaking roof issue, I have bought my first item from, I think it's B&M, I thought it was Poundland, but looking across the road I think, oh no, it's, it's Pound Stretcher, oh they got B&M there as well, anyway, I went in the Pound Stretcher, had a wander around, and this is my first attempt, a bath mat, which is completely plastic, it's got no holes, but it's got suction caps as well. So, it's got tall fins on, what can I do? Um, anyway, so I, what I'm going to do is try to attempt to stick this on the top. I can't keep my finances down, but I've just got to stop stuff leaking into the roof until next month when I can maybe pay for something more substantial or we might not get any rain for a while and I might not have to worry about it. But it really concerned me yesterday. Can't, couldn't believe how much rain was coming in especially through all the um, lighting system and everything so but I have no money left I've got a hundred pounds to see me and Lex for the next couple of weeks no idea how I'm gonna do it I can't touch my credit card cannot I've got to pay that off so um, I was I did go into Asda to get a three pound meal because I was dying for the loo for a pee but um, there was no security on and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to buy anything at the moment. I'll eat what's in the bag and maybe I'll get something proper later and I'll just make sure I've got some stuff for tomorrow when I'm at work. Anyway, just wanted to let you know what my first purchase is in the attempt to keep the rain from coming down into the car. I'll try it on later and then I'll show you. Okay, catch you later. So guys, here's my idea. Put it over the top of the sunroof. It is rather small. I'm going to stretch it right out in a minute. Get it so as flat as I can. But I'm going to put that on first on one. It's got these little suction cups, you see. And they will suction down onto the car. So they will stick overnight. I can't drive with it, obviously, but... You know, when I'm not stood still and they're pouring down with rain, I'll put this on the top. There just might be hope. It does suction. Uh, might be hope for not getting the water through. So, give that a go and see if that works. Well, here it is, guys. Halford car cap for medium cars which says will fit small saloons so i'm just hoping it'll fit my not so big lexi roof i've got to see if i can fit it to start off with uh, and it's raining outside a bit but not as bad as it's been so i'm going to go over to my favorite park up location hidden down the little laybys and see if i can get put this on Catch you later. So it was very, very windy outside. So I didn't really, wasn't able really to film it. So basically what I've done is I've put the sheet over the top. One elastic has gone round one mirror, wing mirror that side. And another elastic that side. And then the two elastics at the back I've actually brought inside the boot. And where I've got like a... Um, a bungee wire that goes across my boot from you know left to right sort of like a back to stop things slipping out um, I've attached each of those wire each of those elastics to that so they've come inside but they just um, the, the, nothing should run off them I don't think into to the car but I'm hoping not anyway so it's, as you can see it's really really windy and already it's blown it around a bit and what I need to do I think is to tighten you know wrap around the mirror a couple of times to tighten it up i haven't been outside again to see how far across the roof it's gone but i'm hoping it's gone as far as i can see where it comes across there and there 
um, and that should cover most of the sunroof I think, the majority of the sunroof. Um, I haven't had any rain now, of course I haven't. Sun's out so I don't know if there's going to be much rain now. I did want to test it to see how it coped. It's coping quite well with the wind which is quite surprising. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd show you how it looks from the inside of the car. I managed to slip in just through the back door, just open it a little bit. Obviously the, the elastics are very, very stretchy, very easy to stretch. So just crawled inside from there. And I should do crawling out, same crawling out. Okay, talk to you later, guys. Well, fancy seeing you here. Oh God, I am close to cracking up and having a mental breakdown like I did in April when I gave everything up and moved into my car. Oh, it's just been horrendous. And it's all to do with the rain. So, as you know, Lexi and her sunroof have an issue and there's water pouring in everywhere. And it's gotten me down every day just a little bit more. Um, last night I went up to, again up to Carlisle, Penrith Way. Um, so I, I went up to, um, yeah, when I came back I went right up to Penrith to sleep the night because it seemed that we would not have rain for most of the night. So I parked up in a lay-by, checked the weather map, no rain for hours and hours. Um, so didn't put the sheet up, snuggled down for the night. Um, and I can't remember what woke me up about midnight, but something woke me at midnight and I just decided to look at the map. And heavy rain was imminent. Oh, so in the middle of the night, I jumped out of the car, put the sheet on, covered it all up, got back in the car, and waited for the rain. And the rain came. It came about two o'clock in the morning, and it didn't stop all day. So from two o'clock till five, I lay in bed, listening to the rain on the sheet hoping and praying that everything was going to um, get through okay and it did, it really did. Nothing got wet, no roof, nothing, so that was brilliant. At five o'clock I usually head down to Tea Bay where I'd clean my teeth and have, um, you know, go to the loo and everything. But this morning I couldn't move because the rain was pouring down and if I moved it meant, would have meant I'd Taken the, I would have to take the sheet off, drive down to Tea Bay, put the sheet back on, do what I'm going to do, then head down to um, down south to my services. But this morning I decided that what I was going to do was get down to the services where I work quite early because I've come to understand that A, where I park it's very dark because I don't put any lights on and B, the night shift have no idea who I am or what my car's about and I can park away from the camera so nobody has any idea so I decided that at 5 o'clock this morning I would get dressed in the car and then at half past 5 giving me an hour to get down to my um, service area to work at half past five, I set off, put the sheet away and set off down to my services. And that's what I did. I parked up at my services, put the sheet back on, hid inside for about, uh, I was a bit early, so I hid inside um, the car for about 15 minutes. Then I got out, made sure the sheet was all sorted and went into work. And I've been into work all day. It has rained all day. So... The day was really soggy and wet. I mean, even though I went outside, I got absolutely soaking wet all day. And by the end of it, I was pretty miserable. 
you know, I was wet, I was cold. As soon as I got into Lexi though, I mean, you know, after getting under the sheet and everything, um, and into the car, I thought, God, I, I can't deal with this. I really can't deal with this anymore. I can't. I, like I say, at the end of the day, I was cold and miserable. And I have driven down to, where have I driven to today, tonight, I looked on the map and said, we're going to find the sun. We're not going to park in rain. So, I've driven down to Chester and Ellesmere Fall. I've just had me dinner and dried my sheet and my yellow luminous jacket at um, Eastern Park or whatever it's called up Birkin Headway. And now it's drizzling a bit, but I'm a little bit happier because I've got the sheet to dry. Um, basically, I'm going to pay to spend the night on the services so I can go to the loo without having to worry about, you know, where I'm going to go to the loo. And I thought, right, pamper myself a bit. <laughs> I've already spent like 60 quid probably. No, it's probably about 30 quid in it down to, uh, down to Chester. I've spent 30 quid there, probably be 30 quid back on it. Um, I just, I have to look after my mental health. My mental health at the moment is rock bottom. I'm close to saying, you know, fuck work. I tell Ed I can't come back. I desperately need the money, as we all know. I just want the rain to go away, and we've got it. Apparently it's sunny tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a sunny day, and I'll head back up towards work tomorrow and enjoy my sunny day. Then on Thursday, it's supposed to be heavy rain. And on Friday, it's heavy rain. And on Saturday and Sunday, it's heavy rain. I mean, it's just non-stop torture. And it's killing me. Now, I've got two days off after... Um, so, today is Tuesday. So, Wednesday is my day off. Thursday, I'll be working. So, Friday and Saturday, I have two days off. So I'm just gonna go, I have to, I'm just gonna go again, spend the money and go and find the sun because otherwise I'm, I'm just gonna crack up. And um, I don't know what I'll do. I know I've got to sort the sunroof out. I do, I just can't think straight at the moment. I can't think who to use. The only people I really trust are down in Alton in Hampshire. That's another two hours from here. Um, I've got to email them and, and ask them um, and I might do it over a two day stint you know go down the night and the night I finish give them the car the next day and then head back the day after that so I'm going to email him and ask him if he'll uh, just at the very least have a look see what he can see or his guys can see and um, you know, if they can't fix it, suggest where I would go next to get it fixed. So, on the way to Chester Services now. I've been on here for 13 and a half minutes, ranting and raving. I will talk to you next time. See you later, guys. Morning, guys. So, this is Radio 2 on a sun Saturday morning. Sorry, Radio 2 Saturday morning with my wonderful, wonderful Tony Blackburn I'm playing the 60s cheers me up no end I can sing away to most of this stuff love it how do you like my new filming location so what I've done is I've put my phone in between my steering wheel I'm not sure how this is going to come out. But anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted to do a really quick catch up because I am trying to finish off this um, YouTube video for you. So I just want to let you know that I have got my roof fixed, fingers crossed. So a couple of days ago, um, I contacted this garage on that I found on a Google review in local in, in uh, Kendall. And um, he's called David Brakes. What a hero, he's my hero anyway. Um, 
so you know as mechanics are I went I went to find his garage and I got there and I said look I said I've got an issue with my sunroof it's letting in water and I need someone to look at it is there any chance you could look at it and let me know what the issue is so as a typical mechanic he said well yeah I can do but you know you've got to wait two weeks and I'll I'm very busy and I'm full up and I haven't really got time to look at you and I said I understand that I really do I said but I just I just need an honest opinion and your Google reviews say that that's what you are an honest guy who does honest work and I really just want an honest opinion and if you if it's serious and if you can't do it and if you can't fix it that's okay but I just need to know what it is um, and you know, maybe it's just some idea as to where I can go to uh, to get the work done. So he said to me, you know, he said, right, OK, come back at 4.30 and I'll have a look. I was explaining that I was sort of like came, you know, left my home, came up north looking for work. And I was living in my car, so I think he felt a bit sorry for me. And I went back at 4.30 and um, I waited while he finished looking at another customer's car and then he motioned me in and I said look, I said before we go anywhere everybody has to earn their money. I said I work to earn my money and you work to earn your money and what I'm going to do now is important, you know. So I handed him a, two fivers, a tenner. And I only gave him two fivers because I really only had £20 in my wallet or two fivers. I said, look, here's a tenner for half an hour, um, half an hour's work. I really appreciate the fact that you just look at it and give me some advice um, as to what it might be and what I need to do. I said, that'll be a start because I'm really at the end of my tether with this, as we know by the video we've just watched. <laughs> So um, he was struck by that. He said, well, you know, I don't want this money. And I said, yeah, well, you've got to have it. I said, because there's no point me coming here and asking for your um, for your um, advice and help if I'm not paying for it because we've all got to earn our money and it's half an hour of your time that you're putting out for me. So anyway, he kept hold of it a little while and um, he went and got the... Uh, we opened the sunroof and he looked at it and he said, well, yeah, here are your two outlets. Let's see if they're blocked. And then he got the air compressor onto it and boosted out whatever was stuck in there. And we tested it and the water ran out. And that was all good. Um, <clears throat> so that was it, within half an hour. It was sorted, done. And I was back to normal. That was so worth a tenner. So anyway, as I was getting in the car, he threw, threw a fiver back at me. He said, I'm not taking all of that. And I said, well, you know, I'm not going to argue. Thank you very much. I wanted to say I didn't give you two fibers because I thought that's what you might do because I really didn't. I was honestly thinking about going to, um, going to you know, um, a cash machine and getting money out so I had a tenner. But, you know, it was just one of those days where the, I was just wanted to get things done and I was fed up with everything so anyway he gave me a fiver back and he did say you know come back come back anytime you know he was I think he was really happy that I'd had actually offered to pay something for his time and I think that's really important I think we're very very good at trying to get stuff for free I don't believe in getting stuff for free when I go and get my showers at the shower block I always uh, at services I always buy something in the services that's like my way of saying thank you for letting me use your shower um, you know, and I'll put some money back into the services. Everything I do, I try to put some money somewhere if it's helping me because um, you shouldn't expect stuff for free. Why the hell should you? You know, people get fed up of thinking that they are expected to give free service. I mean, we work hard enough and we give lots of our life, life away free. So I just want to say thank you to David for being such a hero. Um, and helping me out so appreciated and it didn't cost me an arm and a leg and I wasn't ripped off and he was a true gentleman and I'm back to normal now so I will catch you soon and I'll give you an update
um, into October. Sorry it's taken a while to do the videos. It's I You work, work, day off, day off. And then all the rain came and I was just so depressed I couldn't do anything. So I've caught up with video, a video um, edit yesterday. And um, so I will get this out to you pronto. Catch you soon. Be good, guys.